Georgia passed a new voting law, and a bunch of corporations are canceling Georgia over it. Now Republicans want to cancel those corporations. But is canceling the cancelers the right thing to do? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. So, Georgia passed a Republican-led voting law that is stirring up a lot of controversy. This law is the most controversial thing to come out of Georgia since peaches on pizza. And I thought pineapple was divisive. Many people are outraged with this law's revisions to absentee voting, early voting, and voter ID requirements. They believe that it unfairly restricts voting rights for racial minorities, especially the black community. More than just that, some critics say it's a violation of their dignity and power. Civil rights groups are suing Georgia for violating the Voting Rights Act of 1965, along with the First and Fourteenth Amendments. Even President Biden went so far as to call it Jim Crow in the 21st century. Jim Crow laws imposed racial segregation and voting restrictions in the South after the Civil War for a hundred years. And Biden also called the new Georgia voting law a blatant attack on the Constitution and good conscience. He then added, plus if these citizens can't vote for me, then they won't be black anymore. Okay, Biden didn't actually say that. Which means he's getting better at this whole communication thing. Maybe. Martin Luther King Jr.'s eldest son, Martin Luther King III, even calls Georgia's new voting law racist. And so you're saying that you view the bill that he signed as a form of racism? Oh, absolutely. There's no other reason. We're supposed to be expanding the right to vote to make it easier for more people to vote, not restricting the right to vote. It's a travesty. It's tragic. So a lot of people are saying the Georgia voter law is racist voter suppression. And there's growing pressure for corporations to take political stances against the law. Activists, for example, called for boycotts on corporations like Coca-Cola for being silent on the issue. In fact, they said that their silence is dangerous. The message is that corporations need to do more than just withhold support from elected officials. They need to actively condemn the law. Why would Coca-Cola speak out against this? They don't even speak out about global warming, no matter how much their polar bear mascots beg them to. Of course, it's because Big Cola secretly supports hot climates. But anyway, due to the growing pressure, Coca-Cola did eventually condemn the Georgia voting law. The CEO called the law unacceptable and a step backward. And a flood of other corporate CEOs followed suit. Among them are big tech, banks, and even airlines. Okay, the only one of these corporations that should be weighing in on the voting law is Delta. If anyone knows about making people wait for hours in long lines and dividing them by class, it's the airlines. But it doesn't stop there. Activists like the National Black Justice Coalition are pushing for sports organizations to boycott Georgia as well. Major League Baseball did just that. They pulled the upcoming All-Star Game out of Georgia. Sports and political commentator Keith Olbermann wants every major sports event to follow suit. Baseball acted quickly and decisively and in so doing saved its celebration of Jackie Robinson Day on the 15th. The people behind the Masters don't give a damn about any of that, but the TV networks and the sponsors have to. It is against them that the pressure must build. He wants every broadcaster to cancel any sports event that doesn't cancel Georgia. But I don't think it's wise for sports to try to appeal to fans on the far left. The last thing anyone needs is Antifa learning how to throw curveballs through store windows. But if activists, commentators, and CEOs are looking for a fight, then it's a fight they're going to get from this guy. More after the break. Welcome back. Former President Donald Trump wants to fight the cancelers. 
He issued a statement through the Save America Political Action Committee. It calls for boycotts against organizations like Coca-Cola and Delta for caving in to the left. Chairman of the American Conservative Union, Matt Schlapp, answered Trump's call to action by canceling Coca-Cola and switching to Pepsi. Republican Georgia lawmakers are also canceling Coca-Cola by immediately removing all of their Coca-Cola drinks from their office space. Eight state representatives issued a statement condemning Coca-Cola for caving into an out-of-control cancel culture. So, of course, what Coca-Cola should be doing is caving into an in-control cancel culture, one controlled by Republicans. Of course, if Georgia Republicans really wanted to keep citizens from voting, instead of canceling Coca-Cola, they should encourage people to drink more of it. It's harder to make it to the polls when you lose a leg to diabetes. So are the Republicans making the right call? Is canceling the canceler the right thing to do? I'll get to that later. But first, we need to take a step back and look at the Georgia voting law because the people who supported the law say it isn't about voter suppression. It's about voter fraud suppression. Alveda King, Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece, disagrees with her cousin about the Georgia voting law. Now, voter suppression has occurred through the ages on both sides of the aisle. We know this has happened, but this is not an effort for voter suppression. This is simply trying to regulate and, and, and get a hand on what even happened on the last election, because we had so many dead people voting, people voting twice, people mailing it and then showing up and voting. So many things were happening. We've got to pull it in a little bit. Thanksgiving dinner with the King family is going to be awkward this year. That is, if the CDC lets us have Thanksgiving. But critics of the law pointed out that the provisions limiting weekend early voting would disproportionately affect black churchgoers. That's because many hold souls to the polls events that directly bring black churchgoers to the polls. The provision that limited weekend early voting, however, was already scrapped before the law was passed possibly because Republicans couldn't bring themselves to actually separate church and state. So the law doesn't limit weekend early voting after all. But of course, people still had other reasons they called the law voter suppression, such as the bans on distributing food and water to voters standing in line. Joe Biden calls this provision punitive. They passed the law saying you can't provide water for people standing in line while they're waiting to vote. You don't need anything else to know that this is nothing but punitive designed to keep people from voting. Is this the case? Well, let's see what the law says about food and water. It prohibits people from soliciting votes by giving money, gifts, food or drink to someone while they're at the polls. But it does not prohibit poll officers from making available self-service water. So poll workers can provide water to people waiting in line. Plus, voters in line can still bring food and drinks with them. So this criticism sounds like it's from people who don't know what's in the actual law, Mr. President. President Biden has also repeatedly said that the Georgia law restricts voting hours, which it does not. Even according to a Washington Post fact check, the law makes changes to early voting that expands the opportunities to vote for most Georgians. The Washington Post gave Biden four Pinocchios for that false statement. To which Biden said, I knew Pinocchio. Pinocchio was a bad dude. Another criticism is that the Georgia voting law lowers the number of drop boxes for elections, which it definitely does, but context is important here. Prior to the 2020 election, drop boxes weren't used in Georgia. They were brought in as part of emergency COVID action. So the law says there will be fewer drop boxes in the future than there were during a pandemic, but they will still be used. But what about the part of the law that requires voter IDs? I'll get to that after the break. Welcome back. The most important and most controversial provision in the Georgia voter law is about requiring IDs to vote. First of all, this is about requiring an ID to vote 
with an absentee ballot. Georgia law already requires people voting in person to have photo ID. But you didn't have to show photo ID to vote with an absentee ballot. This new Georgia law borrows the same language for voter IDs for absentee ballots as the Federal Help America Vote Act of 2002. That federal law, by the way, was supported 92 to 2 in the U.S. Senate. Guess who voted for it? Senator Joe Biden. I assume he doesn't remember voting for it. Absentee voting in Georgia prior to the new law only required a signature, which led to controversies in the last election regarding signature matching. Republican lawmakers say government-issued IDs are a security measure for election integrity, for both in-person voting and absentee voting. They say it's like how you have to show an ID to buy alcohol, or get on a plane, or receive a welfare check, because it's super important to properly identify someone who used their welfare check to get drunk at an airport. And also, the government of Georgia provides a free photo ID to anyone who doesn't already have one. But what if someone still doesn't have a photo ID but needs to use an absentee ballot? According to Georgia's Secretary of State's office, voters can also verify their identities with the last four digits of their social security number, a utility bill, a bank statement, a government check, a paycheck, or another government document with their name and address on it. So while there are stricter voter ID requirements than there used to be for absentee ballots, there are also lots of ways that people can confirm their identity that don't rely on a photo ID. So, is this bill worth canceling over? Should we even be canceling at all? Some people who don't like Georgia's new law are still asking people not to boycott, like Democratic politician Stacey Abrams, who has called the law Jim Crow in a suit. But. She's still asking people not to boycott Georgia. I understand the passion of those calling for boycotts of Georgia following the passage of SB 202. Boycotts have been an important tool throughout our history to achieve social change. But here's the thing. Black, Latino, AAPI, and Native American voters whose votes are the most suppressed under SB 202 are also the most likely to be hurt by potential boycotts of Georgia. To our friends across the country, please do not boycott us. So, should we cancel the people who are supporting the boycott? Mona Charon, a policy editor at The Bulwark, warns that the term cancel culture is starting to lose its meaning now that both the left and right are using it to refer to any criticism. In fact, she claims that it will make it easier for real abuses to go unnoticed. Republicans are canceling the businesses that canceled Georgia. But that makes Republicans look like hypocrites for doing the very thing they criticize leftists for doing. And this is being used right back against them. This does not bode well for those who claim to be defenders of freedom. And honestly, watching these politicians and corporations fight each other is heartbreaking. Because if they can't make their relationship work, what hope is there for the rest of us? A poll conducted by The Hill found that 64% of Americans view cancel culture as a threat to freedom. And that's across the political spectrum. When both sides are trying to cancel each other, that makes people more afraid of expressing their political views. It stifles dialogue, and it prevents people from coming together to make meaningful change. Because we're already seeing cancelers cancel cancelers, and soon, New cancelers will cancel the cancelers who cancel the cancelers. It's going to be a never-ending cycle. So instead of canceling, what should we do? Leave your ideas below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. So visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making episodes like this. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.